Okay, okay, what's happening? We on here live with Shakespeare. What's good with you, partner? Hey, man, what's going on with you, Lucky Man? Oh, man, I can't call it, can't call it. You know, just uh, tuning in with you, man, because, you know, see you're making a comeback and got a lot going on, you, and you're about to get out here and get in the forefront. Yeah, definitely, man. You know, I took a little break, man. You know what I'm saying? I had to, had to really find something special, you know what I mean, to, to put that stamp on again or whatever. So, man, now it's, it's, it's on a crack once again. Okay, but before we talk about what you got coming up, you know, let's let's get everybody acquainted with those who may not know you because you know the industry kind of fickle nowadays. You know, tell everybody, you know, who's who are some of the people that that you produce. Well, man, you know, I've I've, I've been very blessed in, in in my career, man. You know, from from working with uh with TLC and uh, executive producing the writings on the wall for Destiny's Child, um, Mariah Carey started Pink off with her first singles. Um, man, Usher, and think, you know, man, kind of lift, kind of goes on, man. I've been very, very fortunate to work with some very huge stars. You know, and work, working with them type of names, you done had some big records, but which one was your biggest record? Well, you, you know, I don't really look at it as just that one big record, but I think that, you know, doing Destiny's Child when at a time when I really – uh, had you know a, a real big impact on, on on really structuring the way that that whole album and the whole sound of that time and, and and of them really kind of breaking into the industry the way that they did. It's that body of work that I would say that probably was most impactful. But after that, I would say you know being able to have a, a record on NSYNC in the first day it came out selling a million records that first day that was pretty impactful too. Yeah, that, that yeah, that's very impactful because people are not even seeing that today. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you know, that, that's like an ancient word. <laughs> About record sales. <laughs> that and, and plus a million sales at that. Man, you know? let let alone a million in one day. Yeah, for sure, for sure. <laughs> You know, so you know, reference a lot. You know, a lot of those artists that you work with. You, do you still keep a good relationship with any of them? Yeah, definitely. You know, I mean, I, I keep a, a great relationship. You know, what I'm saying with 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 all the people that I work with. At least I try to, anyway, as much as possible. So, you know, I mean, you know, people kind of grow and go different ways from time to time, or whatever. And then, you know, you got some people that you just always stick close to. Okay. All right. Well, you know. A, a lot of you know you you're kind of like a quiet person. You know people don't really know too much about you. You know, so right. you, know, you know I kind of I kind of you know was trying to find a little dirt. You know I I ain't find too much, but we did find out that you were dating uh, Candy from Escape. You know, and now you know now she's you know the big reality show star and things like like that. So what type of relationship do you and her have right now? Uh, me and Candy will always be cool. I mean, because you know all of those big records, we actually did those together. So that was definitely um, we were uh, a writing team, you know that 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 kind of made our mark in that era and wrote a lot of big records for you know a lot of big artists and also created artists that you did not so much know about that are, that you know about today with with some of those records. Okay. You know, and you know, I'm 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 a real hard critic right now. You know, with, with today's music, you know, so you know, give give me your 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 input on how you feel about today's music compared to what it used to be. Well, you know, I, I'm a lover of of, of the creative, um, and I think like anybody else, I have my preferences. Just like we all have our preferences, certain certain people like certain different things, but I respect it all, man. You know, because I know that people, you know, the generation before me and you know the generation before them, every generation that has music, the generation before them doesn't necessarily uh, embrace it or right away or think that it's as creative as the previous generation. But it's all creative to me, so I don't take anything from anybody's generation of music. I respect it all. You know, some of it I love, some of it I like, some of it I don't necessarily like too much, but I do respect it all. Okay. So is there is there any artists out, you know, right now that, that you that you want to work with that you haven't had the opportunity to yet? 
You know, um, I think if there's anybody who, who, who's talent that I really respect and just that kind of does everything well, which, which I would probably say is Drake. But, you know, that's, that's something right there that, you know, if that was something that I wish to pursue, fortunately, because of, you know, different relationships or whatever, I could make that happen as well. Yeah, yeah, Drake. Drake. I have to say, Drake is one of the ones that's really holding it down. I, I have a lot of respect for Drake and what he's doing. So, but it, all right, I'm, I'm gonna flip the script for you. Is there any record that that has been out that you know maybe didn't do as good that you price that you listened to and price said if I would have did this record, this is what I did. That record would have been a hit. Oh boy, that's a straight up hard one. <laughs> Oh, look, man, you put me on the spot on that one. Man, I would have to think about that. <laughs> uh, oh, man, I, I've never been approached with that question. Um, let me see. Oh, you know what, man? i tell you what. I, n- let me just tell you what the closest answer that I could give you to where I know if I was in charge of the situation, I do believe that I would have made a whole different impact. And I would have to use the example of Trinidad James. Because, you know, all go to everything was really be- beginning, had the beginnings of a, of a, of a groundbreaking career. But, I, like, if it was me, I would have done the next record that I would have done would have been Pop the Molly, I'm Sweat. I mean, I would have taken punchlines out of that same record, and I would have had at least a good three or four more records just like as Bruno Mars right now has Don't Believe Me, Just Watch, which is, you know what I'm saying, the number one record in, like, almost in the world. Like, he had all of those punchlines Trinidad James did in that one record, and I just would have rolled the wave with those punchlines. Yeah, that, that would have been creative. And, and, and I'm glad you brought that up because, you know, he's still getting paid off, off of that, that record, even though he didn't do it. And, you right. know, and then with the, with the situation that happened with Pharrell now, um, you know that 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 you know there have been a lot of producers you know come out vocally about it. You know some you know it's like yeah, you know it, you know they stole it, and some like no they didn't. So you know it's just a create. You know when when you in a studio creating something, and you and you know and you get you in your groove. What what, is, what what would you say is your limitations in reference of what, if you find something that's similar to something that, that's already been out there compared to you trying to do it yourself? I would say, for me, I look at it this way. If it's, if it's similar, go ahead and pay the people. Make sure you get the clearance. If it's even similar, just to, just to kind of not have those kind of problems, to even ride the barrier, because, you know, you got to kind of just have a, a realistic approach of what the average person would think when they hear that that song that you're doing or whatever. So, I mean, there's been songs where I've used samples or whatever, but I immediately get them clear. Just I don't even like to ride that line because, you know, you, there's so much other money to be made just with having a successful record. You don't necessarily have to have all the publishing on it too, especially if it's, you know, uh, another idea that can be related to, something that was prior, you know, done uh, or earlier or whatever. So, man, I'm just like, man, pay the people, give the people their credit, give the people, you know what I'm saying, their share of the bread and, and have success and, and not have to worry about all of the repercussions of copyright infringement. Okay. All right. Okay. Well, let's, you know, let's 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 try to get him. You know, I also had, you know, peep, peep the game. You know, I see that you were doing some stuff for Christina um, Milian. You know, you know, what's that about? Well, you know, she's still in the process of, of kind of figuring out her situation, but she's a very good friend of mine. We definitely have um, have worked and, and do work together well. I, I enjoy working with her. I think that she's an a, a awesome talent. Um, and so, I, you know, I just look forward to seeing, you know, kind of how her, her musical career, you know, kind of takes off and, and, and blossoms. I know she has her show now and uh, has, you know, different situations coming. So, you know, this music thing is, is kind of, it's funny, man, because, you know, a lot of people even that you think would pop off right away or has popularity or whatever, it doesn't mean that you have just instant success in music. So it comes in different ways. So, man, sometimes you have to sit back, really be patient, and, and, and just kind of, you know, let things mature into its own before you can really call it because you don't see this coming all the time. 
Yeah, and you know, and you just said something else that you know I'm gonna ask you, Rick. There's a lot of artists that that's on reality shows now, and a lot of them are you know pretty much known for being on a reality show, but their but their musical side is not doing well at all. Right. You know, would you say that the reality shows are killing artists or helping them more? Well, you know, for for me personally, I just I believe that it's it kind of depends on what angle the show is coming from. So I think that it could do a combination of both, depending on that artist, their path, and also, you know, what they're currently doing on that show. So I'm not one to just say that a reality show will kill an artist, but I'm also not saying if not done right, it definitely kills an artist if it's not properly put together or if it doesn't have the, if it doesn't segue and put the importance on music and it's a lot of drama and, all the other kind of stuff that people, it's like people get turned off real easily or people feel like, okay, you just like me. And when a person feels like you just like me, then they don't really have any reason to go and try to buy you, you know what I'm saying, because they feel like, okay, you know what, you're regular, so if I want regular, I could just look in the mirror and they don't need you. That's why superstars are put on such a, a pedal stool because they, they keep a lot of their, you know, uh, interpersonal stuff uh, private so people don't necessarily see that, so that's their getaway. So, you know, that, I think with superstars and with stars and artists, period, I think it's important to have mystique. And in this day, it's a lot harder to have mystique because you definitely have to have a different presence and popularity now for the younger generation to accept you. But you still have to do things in a way that keeps the younger generation in all of you and not thinking that you're regular just like them. You know, and, you know and, and not only reality shows, you know, social media, you know, a lot of artists are using social media like, you know, to, keep, to put out anything and everything. And, it's, and a lot of them, a lot of them don't, have, don't even have records no more or even relevant in the game, but everybody is focusing on what all the drama that they put out on social media. So do you think social media has really kind of killed a lot of the, the, the music itself and, and made everything more dramatical? Well, no, I think that what it is is that music consistently uh, uh, goes in a cycle. And it's just like, okay, from the one era when music was just, you know what I'm saying, all live band and live recording. And then all of a sudden, you know, recordings started coming out with machine drums and, and synthesized sounds or whatever. And it's just, a, it's just a different time. So the people who started using the synthesizers were ridiculed by the people who came from the era who just played all live in the studio all at one time. Then you got people now that may sing and have the uh, use Pro Tools to record and have a little auto-tune and all of that kind of stuff. They're ridiculed by the people who use synthesizers and drum beats but maybe didn't have the, 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 the auto-correction that, that we have today. So all of it to me is just technology is always going to switch up an era in music, and it's always going to be a change in music depending on what that current technology is. So I'm one who embraces the change, so I embrace the technology, I embrace social media, and I also understand how you have to have a social media presence these days in order to get to the younger generation because all they do is listen to their phone. So from their phone, I mean, not even just computers, or, you know, or iPads, but the telephone right now is like the most powerful tool that most of the younger generation uses. So, you know, I, I get it. I, I don't have a thought process of it's destroying anything. I think that as in everything else, you either are in front of the change or you go with the change or you get left by the change. Okay. All right, you know I'm also I'm looking looking here on the internet, and I see you know I mean that you did you was working with uh with Dobe you know may he rest in peace, so yeah, you know I know you probably got some heat sitting in the lab. <laughs> you know what man, R.I.P. man, I'm talking about man Dobe man, that was like my little brother man, and uh you know it's um it was a a, a tragic loss, uh, a life taken way too early, Dobe was developing to be that real superstar that I believe that would have had real staying power in the industry and also would have changed the game, maintained the game, and elevated the game. So 
there um I got some things in the vault because I mean like basically when he wasn't if he wasn't on the road or if he wasn't at home, he was with me. And so we definitely got, you know, a ton of music that we've done that, you know, it's just a matter of when it's going to be the time, the right time to release it where it can get the best look and make sure that, you know, his legacy and, and his kids, you know, benefit from the work that he did while he was here. Yeah, because, you know, I, did, I had the pleasure of meeting him a couple of times, and he was, he was one of them real good guys, you know what I mean? He, you know, most of these new orders are kind of standoffish or too Hollywood, but he was, like, real embrace. He had the Southern hospitality, so, you know what I mean? You know, I hope hope the world get to hear some, some more music on him because, like you said, there was a talent that, that was gone too soon, and, you know, I know a lot of people want to hear what he what he had. Definitely, man. Like that. Now he was just a, you know, not only just a very talented artist, but he's just a good dude. Period. Like very humble, very hospitable. You know what I'm saying? And will give you the shirt off his back, man. And then he will also be the type of dude that when people even did him wrong, he would turn the cheek rather than retaliate and just be like, man, you know what? I'm just gonna grow above that. Like Dobie was a rare breed. A person first, let alone the talent that he had when he would go in. There's very few people that I've seen go in the studio and record like he does and really, like his memory. You know, Jay-Z has that same, you know, that, that same type of ability to where they don't have to write anything on paper. Like, Dobie never used any paper or whatever. He would go in, come up with his lines and memorize them immediately and before you know it, he has the whole song put together. And so it's like and it doesn't take him very long to do it. So, and he would come up with just some of the, just the coldest lines, man, like ever. So, you know, he definitely uh, just a, a rare breed of person and and artist as well. And we definitely miss him. Okay. Well, yeah. Well, well, let's jump into you know, I mean, what, what you got going on because you did, you didn't work with some of the biggest female groups in the game. And you know, and I had the pleasure of of this new this new group of yours landing in my lap and and, and checking them out. You know, how did this come about? Man, well, you know, uh, the 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 group, the uh, by the way, which is named Epic, they were brought to me by a very good friend of mine and actually a business partner of mine by the name of Doe, and he found he saw these girls in the mall. And he, when he first saw him, it was four, four girls. He saw him, he said he passed by him, and he just, like, something was different about him. They weren't doing anything except for just doing what young girls do in the mall. But then he said he, he looked, and, you know, we kind of it stuck in his mind. He said about ten minutes later, after he had picked up a few things from the store, he, can't, he comes back around and see a crowd kind of gathering around, and he hears some singing. And so he goes and he looks over the balcony, and he, sure enough, it's those girls that he thought did something. They were just singing some acapellas or whatever, and, you know, people start to crowd around him and everything. So I think he just walked by them, gave them his card, and said, you know, have your people, whomever they may be or whatever, get in contact with them. So fortunately, a couple of days later, they did. And so – Doe has, you know, many relationships with a lot of different producers and songwriters and things of that nature. But he was like, man, I got something I want to bring to you because I know there's not a lot of people who have a lot of experience or as much experience as developing girl groups as I do. So he brought them to me, man, and it's like it was one of those things to where the first day I saw what the vision can be. And we actually started working the first day that we were introduced. You know, I mean, I talked to to the to the grandmother and to the managers and, you know, just people. And we just got comfortable real fast with just what each other had to bring to the table, man. So, you know, the excitement just led me to immediately start developing them and putting them in the studio and start getting developing the sound. And that's that's uh, we're we're just continuing doing that. It's been eight months now that we've been working together, man, and, and I think we've we've just made some leaps and bounds and we got some leaps and bounds to go, but I'm very excited about it. Okay. So so who who came up with the name of the group? Well actually I did. Um it was uh it was just one of those things where the 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 girls look 
like the name that they have now. And they also had the spirit of just being epic. And, you know, we kind of tossed around some other names, and, and I kind of slid it in there. It wasn't one of those things to where uh, I said, okay, this is what the name should be and what does everybody think. I kind of subliminally told my partner, Doe, and we just started kind of using it here and there and just to see what the response was with the girls, with, you know, their friends and with their family or whatever. And every time we would say it, everybody would kind of light up just naturally, and they didn't even know why. But myself and Doe, we looking at the reaction of this. So it, it, it finally came to where we officially brought it to the table to where Epic was the suggested name, and, and everybody loved it right from the beginning. Okay. All right. So, you know, uh, the the first single that y'all, that y'all put out on them, you know what I mean, of course it's a remake, and everybody, you know, a lot of people have thought probably thought about redoing this record. But in Vogue is a hard, you know, task to redo. So who who came up with the idea of redoing the in Vogue code on? Well, it was it was a collaborative effort, you know, with with Doe myself and also the girls. You know, it was uh, something that they had sang, you know, uh, prior to just in 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 doing the acapella or whatever, and so. It was more of a thing to where I had I went back to understanding how like my generation came up like my pops the first album like you know he he wasn't really too keen on all the rap music and all that other kind of stuff right but the first album that he actually went to the store to buy me was New Edition right because he's like listen I want you to listen to these guys right here you know what I'm saying these guys are going to do something this this is this is the type of music that I support you listening to. So I took that as an example in my mind. Then I also have had plenty of, uh, of, of uh, females come to me that, you know, made, were church going and, you know, moms and pops didn't necessarily like secular music or whatever, but their first album that they bought them was Destiny's Child, The Writings on the Wall, because they were basically like, listen, it's okay to listen to Destiny's Child. We, this is something that we can approve of and, and all of that type of stuff. So I kind of – use that approach with doing hold on. Hold on is not necessarily for our target demographic or age group. It was really more for us, like people our age and, and that have children or have teenagers or young adults and saying that, hey, we remember that song. They're paying homage. They're doing a good job at redoing it and, and making it known that it's, it's something that has already been done. But the clean-cut image – but yet, you know, edgy image or whatever, it's okay to support them. So I want people, the parents first, to endorse that it's okay for their children to listen to Epic. So that was kind of some of the reasoning behind, you know, just putting this out as a first look. We, didn't, we don't intend for it to be uh, like the main single or anything of that nature, but it's just an introduction that there's a real girl group that can really sing that has class and that has people behind them that understand the impact of what music does and the impact and the influence that we have to have on children. So this was one of those ones that we hope open up that door for the parents to endorse the girls. Then that way they can endorse their kids to endorse the girls. Well, you know, Puffy has an old saying, you, you know, you can't, go, you can't go wrong with a hit that's already been a hit. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, man, Puff is one of the best that ever do it, man. Now, listen, he'll take a remix in a minute and make it a smash. So, you know, yeah, he's right about that. Yeah, and, and you know, and I have I have to get a girl's credit. You know, they they right on point with it. But the track, I mean, what you did with the track is ridiculous. Well, thank you, know you brother. Me? That's you know, saying I can't take all the all the credit for that. My, my man Bolo, which is. You know, one of the producers, young producers that I work with that um, has done a lot of stuff in the past. And matter of, uh, he's done, you know, quite a few records, but this was one of the ones I told him. I said, listen, once we decided to do this record, I knew that he kind of had that sound, that, that trap, but still has enough musical sensibility to fit what we were trying to do. So I kind of, once he gave me his rendition of it, I kind of polished it up and we kind of did it together. So, man, it definitely, that wasn't. From the production side, musically, that just wasn't me. That was that was Bolo 
and myself, you know, saying in collaboration, but he was the one, the driving force behind that rendition of the music. Well, well, I must say, you know, y'all did it justice because it, it's one of them tracks that you can you can ride to, you can lean with it, you can just glide to it, <laughs> skate to it. You know, it, it's a, it's one of them all around tracks, but and it goes, and, you know, what I mean, and it fits. It's R and B ish. So it can take you back to the R&B side of, but it still got a little hip hop to it. And then B. Sims comes in; and he compliments it so well. You know what I mean? It's just, you know, it's a great song. And I, 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 see, I see it going. I see it going far, and I think y'all gonna really put a stamp down with it. Definitely appreciate it, man. That's and that's what we're hoping to do. You know, we 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 haven't even really started promoting it yet or whatever, but. You know that's about we about to kick off a campaign, so you'll really start seeing a lot more of it, hearing it more, and uh, and also you know just kind of spreading it out a little further. So we just kind of testing the water to see how people are going to receive it. You know you got to be careful these days, man. You don't really know how to break an act these days. You got to test it because it's not like nobody, no no A and R, no producer, no songwriter, or anything can actually say what's going to be the thing that breaks a new girl group these days. It's just too hard to figure out. There's too many unknown components. So we just, you know, kind of filling the waters and seeing what the reaction is and seeing how people are taking to, to, to the girls. And, you know, so far, so good. So we, we definitely going to keep going in that direction. And uh, then we got some, some other heat, you know, saying right behind it that's going to, you know, definitely help uh, define their careers. Well, you know, I think they can definitely fill a void, you know, because there is, there is no girl groups out there right now, and I think the industry is definitely missing something of that of that sort. So, you know, I, I definitely feel that they can be the ones to fill that void. Well, man, I'm definitely hoping so, man. I'm praying every day, working hard every day. The girls are just remarkably just great to work with, understanding and just hard working. And uh, just well-rounded, man. They just receive information, and they're always trying to learn and, tr- and trying to expand. And they also are eager to impress. You know, they're eager to impress because they want to. They want to be that void. They want to fill that void. That they know that that void is there, and so they recognize that. So they're trying to figure out exactly how to be the spokespersons for that void right now. Okay. Well, we do definitely wish you, you know, a lot of success with with the girls and the record. But do you you have anything else that you're working on that you want to let the people know about? Man, absolutely, man. I mean, you know, uh, you mentioned uh, uh, my man B. Sims. You know, he's going to be uh, up to bat next once we get the girls. He's also on a couple of other records, uh, and and one particular record that we know that'll be a single. He's on that as well. So we we get him his stuff together. He's um, Definitely up to bat next. Uh, the the girls within themselves is is, is just a uh, it's a constant uh, trial of, of of how to get to that next level in this day and time. So they're they're on deck right now. What we're working on, we got a uh, a ridiculous twelve year old out of Jackson, Florida, named Lil uh, Lil Will. That he's definitely like I don't like to really compare, but I mean. The realization is, is I see exactly in him what I saw in Usher. So, you know, he's, he's going to be up to deck. And then I got my man Momo coming off the West Coast that's really about to bring the whole West Coast NWA, MC Ren, Ice Cube type feel back, but with a 2016 flair. So, you know, those are the things that we're working on right now. Well, I see you you're just reaching back in time, huh? <laughs> hey, you, you know, it, it is that time. You know, I, I sat back for a minute, man. And as things were changing, as the download and all of that kind of stuff really started taking place, instead of me trying to, you know, sit there and try to fight it, I sat back and tried to understand it and studied it more so. And once, you know, now I feel like I have a gauge on it so I can kind of more so, like I said before, be one of the people that could be ahead of the time. But being ahead of the time sometimes is taking it back to where it was, just putting a new a new. 2015, 16 twist on it because everything revolves. Everything is one big circle. So what goes out of style a few years or a decade later comes right back in style. And, but usually there's always a twist on the style when it comes back. So that's that's what I'm banking on, and I see that that's kind of how life works. So I'm rolling with life. Okay. That's what's up. So before you go, uh, 
Is there any way people can contact you if they want to get in touch with you, get a track or anything like that? Man, you know what? They can hit me up. You know what I'm saying on on on, on my on my email at Shakespeare, which is S H E K S P E R E one hundred at gmail dot com. That's the best way to get directly in contact with me to be able to get things heard or get a response on certain different things that they're trying to submit or just, you know, ideas or whatever the concepts is, man, like, you know, we definitely reach out to the people and also, you know, to always looking for the next, you know, uh, thing that's coming out that we can that we can support, put resources behind, put some money behind and get it out there and see what the world thinks of. Okay. Well, that's what it is. I uh, definitely appreciate you, you know, getting on the call with us and letting us know what you got going on. And uh, we're going to be looking forward to, you know, hearing more of the different groups you got coming out. Hey, Lucky, man, I definitely appreciate your support, man. And anytime, man, you know, anything that we can do, man, just, just hit us up, man. And, man, I'm there, you know what I'm saying? And, and, and my groups will be there as well. Right, sounds good. Sounds good.